We never can't not do nothing and today we will try to fix this bicycle. This bicycle has an obvious problem of these cranks being loose and we'll see about uh, fixing this. It will probably require replacing the bottom bracket. But first we will disassemble it all and inspect it. Now I'll move the camera to show better what I'm doing and we'll start. You don't have to be looking at me. Okay, this is a single speed bicycle and so we cannot easily move the chain off from the chain rings and having the chain removed will help us a lot. So first thing we need to do is to uh, move the wheel a bit forward in order to give us some slack so we can put the chain off from the chain ring. Before moving the wheel we have these on both sides nuts that hold it in place but also we have this for the brake for the coaster brake and in order to be able to move the wheel we will have to loosen this bolt that keeps this in place and then move it. So let's begin. Here we have two 10 millimeter tools and I will hold this one and here unscrew. Okay, this is a standard M6 uh, metric new, uh, six millimeter uh, bolt and the nut and we, I will replace this nut with the one that has a plastic sleeve that prevents it from getting unscrewed uh, from vibrations. We'll put brand new nut and bolt and nut and new washers. Now we can remove the wheel. For removing the wheel you usually need a 15 or 14 millimeter wrench and in this case I will use a socket wrench this is 14 millimeter size so loosening one side then the other got enough slack and now I just want to show one thing see this amount of space between the dropout and the, the hub the hub flange this is too much this frame is getting very bent as the nuts are tightened and I don't think that's very good for the frame and so before I put this back together I will put two spacers on the sides of this to keep the wheel centered but to make this room a bit smaller so that the frame does not need to bend this much when the wheel is put inside and tightened so for for that I will completely take the wheel out of the dropouts here it is Here we have two lock rings that are of the same thickness and we will use them placing them on this wheel. I have to mine the threads to make sure that these lock nuts fit these threads so I'm starting very slowly just in case okay this goes nice smoothly and one more thing See it has one side that is like bird and the other that is flat and I want to use this side on the outside so that it can catch better on the frame dropouts to hold the wheel in place more, more fast, more steadily and this side will be put against here. And before I do this I will put some mounting paste on the threads and on, on this face of the nut. That's better. To screw this on.
Okay. I will tighten it because this nut is already locked. I just need to tighten this one using 70 millimeter spanner. This is better done using both hands. Don't try this like I'm doing it. I will tighten the other one on the other side doing the same thing. All right, let's see how we do now. Okay, now the wheel is snugly fitting inside the, the dropouts and they no longer need to, to be bent so much in order to, to catch the wheel. I can put the chain back on now. Okay. This looks good now. All right, now I have enough slack to remove the chain and I will put it to rest on the inside of the of the bottom bracket shell on the, of the frame, but first I will clean it a bit. There, it's sitting nice and tight. All right. Now let's get to the other part to show one thing. All right, here you can see this uh, system has cones and, and lock ring. This is a serviceable, adjustable bottom bracket. And I can unscrew this lock ring, then tighten this cone, and that would stop this play. But because I see this much play in the bottom bracket that has been ridden a lot, I expect it to be worn and damaged, so I would replace it anyway. But just for educational purposes, if we were to, to fix this, then I would use a tool like this to slide it in here. This fits the, the cone. And first, I would need to loosen this lock nut using a tool like this. It's reasonably loose. Now I can tighten this. Almost no play now. I, I could tighten it further to, to eliminate any play. But this one is probably damaged, so that would not be very useful. And instead, we will try to replace it with a cartridge bottom bracket by Shimano. Now, how do we do that? First thing, we need to remove these caps from both sides that used to prevent any dirt from coming in here. Then we need to loosen these bolts also on both sides. This is a 14 millimeter socket wrench. Here, the bolt is out. Do the same thing on the other side. Now we, can done that. we have done that. We need to lubricate and clean these threads. And then use a, a tool like this. This tool gets threaded with this outer part inside the crank. And then as we spin this using a 17 millimeter spanner this part gets pushed inside and it pushes against the axle pulling the crank off so that's what we'll do now i have to be very careful when, when threading this in making sure the threads are clean and lubricated and these threads seem to be worn and damaged from what I can see yes definitely all right that's not a good thing and to fix that problem I have a tool that is very similar but it is ground down a bit and I use it only for damaged threads because this one manages to get inside and do the job and I don't suppose these threads will be usable
ok ok when all else fails we need to use a bigger hammer and for that I have screwed in the screw that holds this on the that is used usually for tightening but I have let, left just a few threads just just one turn out and I will I have also removed the left hand side completely so that the axle is free to move out and I will now use this sort of punch and hit it with a hammer in order to make this screw push the axle out while the cranks are stuck against the right hand side bottom bracket and hopefully this will get them off in a few tries now there is just one more trick left in the bag and for that I will use this and a relatively long nut with the same thread and what I will do is put this over the, the axle make sure it's properly seated now screw this in now we'll try to make this axle be pulled from this side turning it into a crank puller This washer is obviously not strong enough. Let's try again. Let's put some lubricant. And we've done it. Now I need I can jump from joy. Excellent. Woohoo. Now we're off to tackle the next problem, removing this this side. Now the, the first thing I do when I'm doing this is to take out the left hand side, even when everything is, is fine, unlike here, and measure because if it's over 35 millimeters it means it's Italian thread and that means that I need to unscrew this anti-clockwise but in this case this being under 35 millimeters it's apparently a British thread which means that I need to unscrew this by turning it clockwise it's best to start properly so let's see if I can get the tool on it have it properly seated all the way okay now let's give it a try this one is going easily in case it isn't I usually put back the axle in and use the the nut and some big washer to keep the tool in place but in this case it went smoothly everything out okay I need to clean this inside now
Now we'll put some anti-seize on it, mounting paste, so that the new bottom bracket doesn't get stuck. And when the, these cranks need to be removed again, the right hand side one, since we will be using here a cartridge bra bottom bracket, we would probably have to get some puller from a mechanics shop and hopefully using Shimano bottom bracket this will be set for another 10 years and then we'll see maybe an angle grinder or a, a tool at a mechanic at car mechanics and now for the for the bottom bracket I wish to measure this to see how how long it is okay it says 116 millimeters 116 and a half okay let's see how it fits here we have 117 and a half cartridge bottom bracket and before we mount it I will also measure this diameter just in case Okay, this is 68 standard. That's good. Now, let's see how the right hand side one crank fits on this. Well, it's, it looks like it will be a good fit and that I shouldn't be using a longer bottom bracket axle. I haven't got much room for trial and error because this crank cannot be removed cleaning it up a bit before mounting and I also wish to check how the left hand side one fits on the left hand side just in case let's give that a test uh, there's plenty of room to go even when we place the left hand side okay I suppose this will be a good fit Let's try to screw this in. Okay, you hear the click. Now I know I can start threading it. That's the safest way to start these ones. It's a very fine thread. Put some anti-seize on it as well. And now the same procedure again. I'm turning it. Hear the click. Now I know that I haven't cross-threaded and I can just keep threading it in the tool for this and 32 millimeter socket and let's give it start okay now we'll just start the left hand side one just to make sure it's all going in properly but I will not tighten it it's got some five millimeters or almost one centimeter out Right hand side one is turned in all the way and then you, you tighten the left hand side. So I will tighten this and this being the British standard, such bottom brackets are, do not have a tendency to get loose from, from pedaling. Quite the contrary, they get further tightened. So I don't need to, to take this super tight. Okay. Now put some anti-seize on this and let's get this over and now we mount the crank the left the right hand side one I'm putting some anti-seize on it as well just in case it should not be necessary but just to be on the safe side and now let's see what this looks like when it's put all the way in well the pedal will definitely clear this but we might not get a perfect chain line however using a shorter 
axle I'm afraid that this will not get pushed hard enough because there's not enough room and I can't risk that because this one cannot be removed later so we are working with what we have now time to put the screw in I'm also putting some anti-seize on it to make sure it provides proper torque let's see what this looks like the chain line okay it's not perfect it's far from perfect It will be fine but first I wish to tighten the left hand side bottom bracket this is tight enough now let's get on with this okay I think this is good now the left hand side crank putting some anti-seize on this side of the axle making sure it's aligned that they are both at 180 degrees compared to each other okay now putting some anti-seize on the mounting bolt as well practically repeating the same procedure nice and tight Now to put this back on. Okay. Good. Now we need to tighten the wheel. Put some anti-seize here and on the face of this nut. And screw it in. And do the same thing with the left hand side one. and preparing the the bolt for the brake finger tight for now now I need to tighten the chain now in order to get the chain tight I need to move the rear wheel back up a bit and here's how I do it this is called walking the the rear wheel first I will tighten this right hand side about where I want it to be roughly inspecting inspecting this link I'll, see, I'll check it out later there's there may be a problem now I will tighten see about the chain if it's too slack as it is now I will move the wheel on the left hand side a bit further back then tighten it not too tight just enough to hold it in place now I can loosen this one and push so that this, this gets further back and keeps the chain tight. Then retighten this. And now check for chain. Turning the pedals to see there's always a spot where the chain is more tight. This is the spot where it's the tightest. 
because the chain rings are not perfectly symmetrical and here it's a bit looser so in the tightest part there's almost no movement there should be about two centimeters movement so I will just loosen it a little bit by holding my hand here let it go a bit okay now try tightening and see if it's any better okay it's better now this is the place where it is most loose but I cannot make it any tighter because it will be too tight in other spots now just to see if it falls off it looks okay we'll give it a test ride and see for the final test on a test ride but for now it looks okay I will tighten this to the full torque okay now let's see about the left hand side I need to loosen it now the wheel has straightened all by itself sometimes you need to give it a bit of a push but in this case it's perfectly aligned just after having released the left hand side okay this looks good chain line well this is a bit too much out but I cannot help it that's just the way this is of all the available at least here in Serbia bottom brackets and this one is fairly durable so I expect it will be a long-term problem solution even if not the, the best ever possible it would have been perfect to right away replace the cranks but I expect this to give it at least five more years of life if not even ten so I don't think it's that critical but I expect problems when I need to replace bottom bracket the next time probably will have to use an angle grinder or maybe completely damage the cranks or get a mechanic shop to get a different type of puller now we need to just do the test ride of this bicycle and see if it's okay but first I will lubricate this chain it's not lubricated this is the quickest way to lubricate a bicycle chain just mind your fingers first I'm running this to give it at least a bit of a cleaning it's not thorough chain washing but it's very time efficient and now I can just put one drop on each link it's best to start this at the place where the chain is connected so you know where you started and where you finish but this chain is so dry that it's very obvious where to finish it if the cranks were not damaged I would have tried first with a shorter axle with a shorter bottom bracket axle but in this case that was unacceptably risky because it might have not allowed for enough engagement of this, these cranks to the to the axle because they were shorter and then we might have had some problems now after I've lubricated I'll just give it a few spins and then remove any excess oil from the chain and give it a test ride and see if I need to tighten the chain a bit more if it gets off the chain rings you have to be careful not to catch your finger in this it will cause you injury but I think this is safer than putting my hand here because this is even nastier okay this looks okay thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed this at least a bit I hope it has given you some ideas on how to fix bicycles how to troubleshoot uh, how to improvise definitely yes and uh, how to replace uh, bottom brackets with square taper axles and if you have any comments suggestions especially corrections in what I did all the comments are more than welcome 
and that's it. Uh, do try this at home. Uh, you can't do much worse than I did and you don't have to be a professional bicycle mechanic in order to fix your own bicycle and make it run. So again, thanks for watching and cheers.